Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whenever it is that you are watching this uh, video. I uh, hope you're home, safe, sound, and taking care of uh, yourselves well distanced from uh, other people. Today, I will offer a very brief analysis of Edgar Allan Poe's uh, short story, Berenice, which is part of our syllabus. Of course, you have uh, read about the Gothic, um, the Gothic style in literature. You have read Patrick Kennedy's uh, article um, on it with some general notions of the Gothic style. Uh, you may know by now that uh, the Gothic uh, in, in literature is an offspring of Romanticism. So you may find certain Romantic um, features or, or concerns uh, in it, but depicted from a particular point of view. You may want to think about nature uh, um, in, in, in the story and what it does to you, but rather what enclosure does to you, right? Um, what enclosure, what being uh, trapped uh, uh, in, in a room, or not trapped, because uh, Jesus' uh, intentions are, are just to stay there. He likes the, 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 the library. But what that does uh, to, to the uh, individual, right? When you think about that library, you may say, oh, okay, that is uh, Recollections in Tranquility, a, a, a common romantic motif, but it is not. Rather, this is overthinking in turmoil. Uh, because uh, Aegeus's um, idea of staying in his library is somehow a metaphor of his being uh, entrapped within himself and his thoughts and his ideas and his meditations, as, as he calls them. Uh, you may find medievalism in, uh, in the citations of... of uh, um, medieval uh, authors, uh, St. Austin, etc., on all the quotes in, in uh, Latin, uh, for sure. But it would be hard, uh, if you're thinking Romanticism and not the Gothic style, to think of how, where do we find the child is the father of the man, etc., uh, another common uh, romantic motif. It is not there. Um, and if by chance you watch Derek Romer's uh, French short film, uh, you may think, well, there's a child in, 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 the, uh, in the film, but there's not much to justify um, that that child can teach anything. Rather, it's just a, 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 an, an empty character uh, there. Similarly, there is no romantic hero here. Um, and Berenice is not a romantic heroine. Uh, she, she's not uh, at all. I mean, she doesn't even utter a, a word in, in, in the short story as reported by, by our first person narrator anyways. Um, so that uh, about the Gothic, but or about rather uh, about Romanticism and the Gothic, but there are a lot uh, of Gothic, particularly Gothic style features, uh, like the description of the, the family mansion and the antique paintings and the oppressive uh, atmosphere of, of that uh, enclosed uh, space, the peculiar contents of the library. Uh, the fact that the mother, uh, that uh, Aegeus's mother died in the library and he was born in that library, right? So, uh, that about uh, the Gothic, you may, you, as I said, you may find a lot of features. Go to uh, Kennedy's article and revise some of them and try to find them in, in the story uh, as you reread it. Uh, just to give you a little bit of background, the story was published in 1930, 18, sorry, 1835, and um, at the time it was considered terribly uh, crude and sadistic. 
uh, and um, and Poe was actually requested to reprint it and toning it down. So five years later, he did in 1840. He republished it, uh, taking uh, uh, away three uh, paragraphs of, of, of the story. So the story uh, opens with um, a, a motto in Latin uh, that uh, says, my companions said to me, if I could visit the grave of my friend, I might somewhat alleviate my worries. Uh, that quote comes from uh, William Jones, and it was published in his complete works in 1799. Now, uh, there is uh, 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 the last bit of that quote that is missing. Uh, from uh, from Poe's motto, and uh, it is when my companion said to me, "Go visit uh, the, the the grave; it might alleviate uh, my my worries." I answered, "Could she be buried elsewhere than in my heart?" And it is an, I think it is an interesting uh, question to to say. What is that bit that is missing from the the uh, the motto that opens the story uh, say about the story as such? And that is, I think, uh, interesting food for thought. Uh, what does it say about the story, and uh, and how are people buried in in our hearts, right? So, of course, you know the, the plot of the story. Aegeus, our narrator, who is an obsessive, uh, compulsive uh, man, man who, um, uh, who suffers uh, from uh, monomania, um, a, a psychological disorder, um, asks his cousin to uh, marry him, Berenice, uh, but he is not so much in love with her as he is obsessed with her teeth. She, she, of course, you could say her smile, but it is her teeth that he is obsessed with, right? Um, so both characters are sick in, in, in a way, uh, but in, in, in different forms, right? Uh, she is uh, psychological, uh, physically, sorry, she is uh, physically uh, sick, she, she has catalepsy, she uh, somehow faints and looks uh, dead, <clears throat> and he is uh, psychologically uh, sick, right, with monomania, as we have said. She loves nature, and he loves meditation in his library, and he is obsessed with being in that space. Uh, Berenice, uh, as a character, we, we, we read about her, but we do not know much firsthand because everything we get comes from our first person uh, narrator. And so um, she seems that she is at ease in nature and that she likes roaming about and, and walking about, etc. But she is an oppressed woman. Uh, of typical of that time, right? And she is dehumanized in, in uh, many ways as, as uh, uh, narrated by uh, Aegeus, right? And uh, eventually she becomes an object of his study, right? When she is a, an object in more than one way. And, and we could argue uh, that that on, on, on many levels, uh, Berenice is is an object uh, to Aegeus, right? Um, and eventually, he we are led to to believe uh, he buries her alive and uh, pulls uh, her her teeth out, um, fulfilling his obsession of keeping her teeth in a box, right? A uh, whole symbol of keeping an oppressed woman in a box, right? Uh, as in the tradition of good horror, uh, the story never actually uh, explains uh, that Aegeus takes Berenice's teeth uh, off. Uh, 
but we are led to believe that uh, in, in the final uh, sections of, of uh, the, the story, right? So the, the, the whole story is an interior monologue um, and uh, I should ask you, can we trust this narrator? Can we actually believe uh, much of what he says, uh, uh, knowing that he is an obsessive, uh, uh, compulsive uh, man, uh, etc.? Um, one of the themes uh, is extracting beauty out of uh, ugliness uh, in, in, uh, in, in the story. And there are these uh, symbols uh, that are the teeth, Berenice's teeth. Teeth traditionally represent death, as uh, you can see in a skull, you know, the, the, the full smile of a, of a skull. For Freud, for Sigmund Freud, uh, the psychologist taking uh, teeth off was uh, akin to uh, castration, right? Uh, in, in this case, we, we could argue that uh, it is uh, somehow the objectification of, of uh, Berenice. And we go <clears throat> on a full arch from sanity to madness, from health to death, on on the part of uh parallelly uh, on 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 the, on the part of both characters um so there's a lot to say but as uh with any good gothic story atmosphere this uh, gloomy dark bleak atmosphere says a lot more than the actions of of the characters or 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 um, Aegeus's narrator, uh, narration, sorry, does, right? Uh, so it is interesting if you consider uh, the mood, the creation of, um, of uh, this, uh, this story and its tone coming uh, together in a very dark and bleak atmosphere that truly um, horrified readers in uh, uh, the mid uh, 19th century. So a very good um, exponent of uh, the Gothic style in American literature. Uh, so hope you enjoy it and uh, read it and reread it because there's a lot to, to say about it. Thank you for watching.